Linzer Torte is one of the oldest known cakes, and it was first documented in a cookbook that dates back to the 1600s. Now, that book was found in the library of the Admont Abbey, located in the Austrian Alps, which makes sense since the Linzer Torte is named for Linz, Austria. Now, by today's standards, this is a very simple confection made of buttery pastry, a few nuts, and a little jam, but it has stood the test of time. And today, Dan's going to show us a modern way to make it. So there's a really a lot to love about Linzer Torte, but some of the old recipes can be pretty fussy. Mm -hmm. So we're going to streamline some things as we go, but we're going to start in the classic way with lots of nuts. Mm -hmm. This recipe is about 50% nuts and 50% flour, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio of nuts to flour. Which is delicious, but hard to work with. Exactly. So before we get to the nuts, we're going to mix our liquid ingredients together, and there's not a lot of liquid in this recipe. We've got one egg, and we've got one teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I'm just going to combine these with a fork. Okay, great, so now on to the rest of our dough. So we're working with hazelnuts, which add a ton of rich, nutty flavor. This is one cup of hazelnuts, and we've toasted it and then skinned them. You don't need to get rid of every little bit of skin. A little bit won't be noticeable, but you wanna get rid of most of it. Okay. I also have sugar, so this is one half cup plus two tablespoons of sugar. Our next nut is blanched almonds, and we're using half a cup of these. And finally, a half teaspoon of salt. So we're gonna go for about 45 to 60 seconds until it's nice and fine. All right. Great, so we can even just take a look at that. Really nice and fine. It's like store-bought nut flour at that point. So our next ingredient is one teaspoon of lemon zest. And I'm just gonna pulse this, five pulses until it's incorporated. All right, so next up we have our flour. This is all-purpose flour, it's one and a half cups. So we have one and a half cups of nuts, one and a half cups of flour, nut heavy dough, which is awesome. Tons of flavor and fat. So now for our spices. We're gonna use cinnamon and allspice. We found some use clove, which really ends up competing with that fruity flavor. So I have a half teaspoon of cinnamon and an eighth of a teaspoon of allspice. So again, five pulses just until combined. So nuts aren't the only thing contributing fat in this recipe. We also have lots of butter. So All right. this is 12 tablespoons of unsalted butter that we cut into half inch pieces, nice and chilled. So we're gonna cut it into here, which is gonna take about 15 pulses. What we're looking for is something that looks like kind of coarse cornmeal. You can see it looks like kind of coarse cornmeal there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And we have our liquid ingredients. So we're just gonna have this running and pour it to the feed tube, go for about 12 seconds and see it come together into a dough. Awesome, time to get it out of our food processor. All right, so now I'm just gonna really gently form it into a mound and then divide it into two pieces. I'm just gonna round this a little bit. We're gonna make a five inch disc out of it. Okay, great, so that we have down to about a five inch disc right there. Mm, yep, that's five Yep, inch. it's five inches. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just gonna move this out of the way. And it is time for the tart pan. Okay. And it has the removable bottom, which is gonna make it a lot easier when it comes to serving this. We're gonna basically treat this like Play-Doh. Oh. We're gonna do a pat in the pan crust. A press-in crust. I'm just pulling off walnut-sized pieces, basically, and dropping them evenly spaced across the tart here. Boy, that just took a lot of the hard work out of this dough. Right? And I just start patting it out. So I'm working it kind of from the center out because what I want at the edge is a little bit of a surplus so I can go up the sides a bit. And I'm gonna press it up about three quarters of an inch up the side. Okay, so that's about as far as I can go with my hands. I'm gonna get some plastic in here now and we're gonna use the bottom of a measuring cup which is just gonna help us get a little more flat on the bottom. Okay, that looks good. So before we do anything else with this, it needs to get cold. If it's really warm, it's not gonna bake really nicely. So I'm gonna transfer this to the freezer and we're gonna keep it in there for about 30 minutes until it really firms up. All right, so while that is in the freezer, we're gonna work on our lattice top. Ooh, the fun part. The fun part, the pretty part. So I'm gonna work with this dough here and I've got two sheets of parchment here. I'm gonna give just a light flour dusting on this guy here. Okay, so I got a little bit of bench flour on the parchment and then my dough and then a little bit more on top there. What I'm looking for is a 12 inch square that I wanna get this out to. And the neat thing about this parchment paper is that it's 12 inches in the short direction here. So if we work with it on top and bottom like that, it'd be ah. a nice, nice visual guide. If at any point it starts to crease and you can tell it's really sticking, just dust a little bit more flour. Awesome, okay, so we don't need to be at a perfect 12 inch square right now. We're gonna do that after we take it out of the fridge. So we're gonna give this a nice chill like we're doing our other dough. So I'm gonna transfer this to an upside down rimmed baking sheet here. That means we have enough room for the whole 12 inches. And I'm gonna pop this in the fridge for 15 minutes to set up before we cut our lattice. 
So our bottom crust is nice and frozen. Oh yeah. So that's gonna help us retain a really nice shape while we bake it. But the other part that's gonna help us is we're gonna blind bake it with pie weights in it, which is the best way. So we're gonna take this plastic off. We have two layers of aluminum foil here and I'm gonna spray it with some nonstick spray. So now I'm gonna fill it with our pie weights. You really need it to be thick enough to go up the sides. And then finally, I am gonna crimp this down over the sides. We want this to bake and set up and not get too much color. It'll just be golden brown around the edge and folding it over helps with that. All right, great, so I'm gonna go into a 350 degree oven on the middle rack. It's gonna take about 30 minutes and we're gonna see nice golden rim. Okay, so now we have a really nice chilled dough here. That's what we want when we wanna cut our lattice. I'm gonna slide it off and I'm gonna peel off the top layer nice and carefully here. And then I'm gonna trim it up just so we have our really nice perfect 12 inch square here. Awesome, so now I'm looking for three quarter inch lattice. So I'm gonna lay my ruler over here and just give myself a few little markings. It's a little bit of math in there. It is a little bit of math in there. So I've got my lines there. And so here's the thing is I wanna use this parchment to help me transfer these over afterwards. So I'm gonna cut down right through the parchment paper. Very clever. And I'm just gonna start a little bit above it there and then drag right through. Okay, so now the final step here is I wanna free these up. I didn't go all the way to the edge, so just place my ruler right here. You give them each their own strip of parchment so they're easy to move around. Exactly. Clever. Okay, so this has softened up a lot as we've been working with it. Before we move it and transfer it and actually make our tart, we want it to get really cold. So we're gonna pop in the freezer for at least 20 minutes. First, I'm gonna pop on a piece of parchment just to keep it protected. Very well. Foil cools off really quickly, so you can kind of grab with your fingers there and just peek. So we're looking for beautiful golden brown like that. We don't want to go any darker at this stage because it's going to bake longer in the second bake. That makes so sense. So this looks perfect. So I'm just going to pick up the foil all around and transfer it away. So we want to cool this all the way down to room temperature. It's going to take about an hour before we fill and then top with our lattice. This is nice and cool and it is time for our filling. We're gonna start with one and a quarter cups of raspberry preserves mm -hmm. and then one tablespoon of lemon juice. Mm, just to brighten it up a bit. Exactly. Okay, so now dump it right in the middle. I do like to put it all in the center and then you can kind of work your way out with it. Filling is in, time for the lattice. I'm gonna go grab it from the freezer. It's important you want to keep it nice and cold right until you use it. Okay, so now it is time to do our lattice. And you'll see that these strips are really nice and easy to work with right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start close to the edge here. I'm gonna put one strip down. We'll let that soften a little bit and you'll see that it's actually gonna sag a little bit into it, which is perfect, that's what you want. So I'm gonna put my next one on and that's gonna go right across the center. And then the third one goes just like that one, but over here. We'll go back and we'll just peel that parchment right off. So we're gonna let this sit. I'm gonna give it a 90 degree turn here. And we're gonna repeat the process. And our third one right up here. So again, go through and pull up our parchment. Okay, another 90 degree turn. And we're gonna start filling in the spaces in between. So we're gonna go right here and right here. One final 90 degree turn. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of press that down a little bit and then use the edge of the tart pan here to knock off that excess. So now I'm just gonna go around with these extra little bits of dough and fill in the gaps in between. Okay, so the final flourish before this goes into the oven, I'm painting on about a tablespoon of heavy cream, and then we're gonna use one and a half teaspoons of demerara sugar just over the lattice there to give it some nice crunch and sweetness. And now it is time to bake. We're gonna go back into our 350 degree oven on the middle rack, bake for about 40 to 45 minutes, and we're looking for nice bubbling filling and golden brown edges. Ooh. It's gorgeous, it looks perfect. You get some <laughs> nice bubbling, really good browning. We gotta let this cool for a while though. Yeah, I bet. It goes for about two hours. But we'll let it cool and then we can cut into it. All right, so it's been two hours. It is nice and cool. Mm. It's finally time to unmold and check this guy out. Beautiful. So we're just gonna slide under here and we just wanna separate the crust from the bottom. Oh, that is gorgeous. It's even prettier out of the pan. So I'm using a chef's knife here, and you just wanna press down and be really firm, go right through that crust. My goodness, look at that Isn't piece. That beautiful? That is perfection, Dan. Sometimes it's better to use a serrated knife, but this is the perfect thing as a chef's knife. Mmm. Oh, goodness. that's really good. Mm. 
The dough is nutty and short, but not too delicate. Just enough jam to have a little sweetness and fruit. The lattice on top is beautiful. I love how much texture, uh, contrast you have in here too. The demerara sugar on top is awesome. There's some seeds in the preserves and then all that nutty richness from the crust mm. is so good. Well done, Dan. Thank you. So if you wanna make this impressive tart, start by making the crust in the food processor. Then divide it into two pieces. Pat one piece into the bottom of a tart pan and roll the other piece into a 12 inch square between parchment. Cut the square into 10 strips and use the parchment to help transfer those strips to the jam filled tart to make a beautiful lattice top. Brush the lattice with cream and sugar, bake and serve. From America's Test Kitchen to your kitchen, a foolproof recipe for a Linzer Tort. I'm totally making this. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later. <laughs>